French-Canadian colonization movement takes me back to my PhD thesis and uh, my first book or two. Um, again, 1840s. 1840s is such a pivotal decade, but uh, what happens, uh, I don't think it's so much because of the rebellion in this case, as uh, by the 1840s, uh, there was very little land left in the St. Lawrence Valley, the Richelieu and Chaudière Valleys, which are the seigneurial heartland of Quebec. And uh, French Canadians start migrating across the border, primarily to the United States, not to Upper, Can Upper Canada, or of course not points west, because the west, our Canadian West wasn't open yet. And then when the Civil War breaks out, um, there is a big demand for uh, labor, and New England textile mills will start uh, you know, expanding very rapidly. Um, and many of the, much of the workforce in the New England, southern New England mills, Lowell and, uh, and uh, many other places, is French Canadian. It's coming directly from uh, Lower Canada or Quebec. This creates an incredible crisis in the minds of the French Canadian nationalists because they think of their province as bleeding and these people are, uh, and particularly um, a, between 1840 and 1867, Upper and Lower Canada are united. Upper Canada is growing much more quickly than Lower Canada. And there's a lot of pressures by the 1850s for representation by population in, the, in what was called the province of Canada in the House of Assembly. So for that reason alone, it's important to keep your numbers up. And then with confederation, when you're only one province in four originally, originally and then one in ten finally, if, you're, if the, much of your surplus population is leaving the province, that creates you know, a whole danger, not only for those leaving to become Protestantized and assimilated as Anglophones, but for Quebec itself to become dominated increasingly by English Canada. So what is the solution? Well, people would say today the solution is urbanization and industrialization, which is what eventually happened in, you know, in the 20th century to keep most, to stop the, uh, the exodus. But of course, uh, the state in the 1840s, 50s, 60s, or whatever, you didn't have state-run industries, right? They subsidized railways, but they don't subsidize industries. They don't have the wherewithal, and it's a liberal, ethos, not just in Lower Canada or Quebec, but everywhere. Liberalism is the dominant ethos. So the state does not involve itself in the economy directly. So what can the state do? Well, one thing they can do is encourage people to move outside the senior, old seigneurial zone into other parts of the province, which after all is very large and mostly uninhabited. The problem, of course, is most of that land is not decent land. I mean, beyond the St. Lawrence Valley in the north, it's the, it's the uh, Laurentian you know, shield or whatever you want, a Canadian part of the Canadian shield, the Laurentian Mountains. On the south uh, Appalachian, the old Appalachian area, part of that was settled by Americans, but you know, the, much of it was not uh, very arable land. And, and both those areas are kind of cut off because you don't have good transportation networks and so on. But the Catholic Church, and once you get responsible government in 1848, the, the, uh, the uh, Crown lands is controlled by the assembly and therefore uh, the government can start building um, colonization roads, as they're called. And this is very much pushed by the Catholic Church, uh, who provide religious services and, and, and so on, because the priest is seen as central to any new parish, any new settlement. You don't want people going there and becoming godless. That would defeat the purpose. Uh, in fact, the Catholic Church creates colonization societies and raises money, and so you have an expansion. And most of the novels written in the 19th century are what we call romans de la terre, novels of the soil. Uh, Jean Rivard and then, you know, Maria Chapdelaine, Jean Rivard in the 1840s, or 50s, I guess, Maria Chapdelaine in 1900, and others in between, all propagating colonization, the need to stay on the land, and more than that, to uh, to move into Lac Saint Jean or into the Eastern Townships or into the Laurentians as a kind of a patriotic duty. Uh, and uh, so this colonization movement was a very important part of the whole French Canadian world after 1840s. And it's largely a reaction. People used to say it was a reaction to industrialization and urbanization because the Catholic Church feared that people would become godless in the cities. But I, I don't agree with that. Um, I mean, the Catholic priests would actually, and there's been research shown, 
would encourage industry in places like Lac Megantic or wherever, you know, they, they were some of the first industrialists themselves, building sawmills and such, anything to keep people in Quebec. If they preached against cities and the evils of cities, what they had in mind was the New England cities, because that's where people were going to urban life in the cities. And, and of course, even 30 Acres in the 1930s, the Trente Arpaux novel, famous by Renguer, again, part of it is, takes place, uh, an older French-Canadian farmer moves to a, a New England city and is completely alienated and unhappy there. So, um, uh, it's not so much then a reaction against industrialization, I argue, as it's a reaction against an exodus of a population. But eventually you might see, because they're preaching the evils of industrialization, or not industrialization so much as urbanization, that you get this um, agrarian mindset. And one could argue, I'm not sure I buy it, but that was one of the reasons why until the 1960s French Canadians tended not to move into industry or business so much as uh, Anglos, and of course you have this Anglo-Protestant Anglo domination in many respects of the uh, Quebec economy until the Quiet Revolution in the 1960s. Uh, if you follow Fernand Ouellette's kind of reasoning that this domination is largely the fault of the French Canadians themselves, or at least of the Catholic Church and of the, the kind of um, traditional value system, then you could say that was a factor. Um, it's it's difficult to you know to, to say for sure, but I would argue that uh, the colonization movement was a very important part of the whole church state kind of uh, ethos. Uh, newspapers were all pushing you know the land and the virtues of the soil.